every single person in this room, you are talking to yourself. You have that voice in your head. Who has a voice in the head? Yeah, the people who aren't putting their hand up and going, I don't have a fucking voice in my head. <laughs> Everybody has a voice. That little voice, ultimately, what do you think it is? It's your ego. Business is one of those things that when, when the pressure is on, when there is stress there, it typically brings out people's egos. Anyone heard of an ego before? Everything has a purpose. What do you think the purpose of the ego is? The ego is actually there to protect you. But unfortunately, you've trained it in a way to protect you from the very things that you probably want. When your ego is running a virus, saying, oh, you know, you should go to sleep. Get some sleep. You can do this later. Don't worry about it now. What is the ego actually trying to do? It's actually trying to help you. It has a positive intent. For most people, the ego enjoys conflict. The ego enjoys levels of pain because then it's got something to protect you from. Who knows people that have very chaotic lives? Okay, that's typically because, if, you know, in most cases they've been derailed by the ego. It's very easy to say, well, that's my ego, but it's also really important to understand what the symptoms are of the ego so that when it's present, we're more likely to accept that this is our ego in play. Because nobody likes to be told, well, that's just your ego. Because when someone says to you, that's just your ego, what do you want to do? Let me show you my fucking ego. <laughs> That's not my ego. So symptoms of the ego are pretty straightforward. You've got deflection, denial, distortion, comparison, defense, justification, and blame. And many of these will actually intertwine into one another. A deflection is when you literally take the conversation somewhere completely different than what we're actually talking about. It wasn't me, it was someone else. It's where they actually defer responsibility to someone else. Deflection is used by the ego to prevent the confrontation of accepting responsibility, which could create some form of moral or ethical pain. Now the moral or ethical pain is, oh my God, I'm wrong. Denial. Is it fair to say that you can say no, and there's an intense amount of tension behind it, that means that there is something more than just you saying no. Denial is when someone has to fight for their no. And a comparison is when you actually come out and, and I say, well, look, you know, I can see right now that you're struggling. You go, yeah, look, but if you're comparing Jane to me, I'm actually not struggling at all. And it's like, well, I'm not comparing you to Jane. I'm having a conversation with you about where I think you're at right now. Justification, where they try and sell you as to why they have done what they have done. The key thing that is present in all of these responses is typically a level of emotion and or tension. It's not a relaxed deflection. It's not a relaxed denial. Because all the ego wants you to do is listen to my stories, trust me. We're best mates. I've been with you for so long. Why would you not trust me? It's important to understand that your ego is a third party entity. But you've been listening to that voice for so long, you actually think that when you're in conversation and dialogue, you actually think you're talking to yourself. But you're not talking to yourself. You're talking to a third party entity that has been created as a form of protection. You want to acknowledge the ego. You want to create a disassociation and start disassociating yourself between the voice and who you are. But what you've got to understand, the power is in your ability to quiet your mind down so that you can actually make better decisions. And it's not until we shine this light on them that we get a better understanding of that. Because when you shine the light on your ego, in a healthy way, it actually starts to dissolve.